When MASB sets its legislative priorities, we start well in advance. In the fall of even-numbered years, we hold meetings across the state in each of our regions and three in Region 8, one in each Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties. We invite superintendents and board members to join us from those regions to talk about what they want to see in Lansing or don't want to see, what would help make their districts run better, and what would help raise student achievement. We take all of those ideas and put them into a survey, send that back out to all of our members, and ask them to rank things in certain categories for what would be their highest priorities. The things that come out of that survey are then taken to our Government Relations Committee. They narrow down the top vote getters from the survey into something that is manageable and put some reasoning behind it and send it to our Board of Directors. The Board of Directors approves that list in January. Once that list is approved, we start meeting with everybody and telling them what your priorities are for the upcoming year. So to just go through the 23-24 priorities, we include increased mental health services and professionals in schools and the resources needed to get more of those professionals in schools. Implementing state-based programs and incentives for teacher retention and recruitment. Establishing school safety as a permanent line in the budget and making it available to all districts so they can spend it as they see fit, not as the state determines needs to be done. Reviewing and implementing the recommendations of the School Finance Research Collaborative. This is something we have pushed for and will continue to push for to start funding our schools more equitably instead of just by per pupil. Specifying that the school aid fund is for pre-K to 12th grade only. This would have to be done in the Constitution and it would remove universities from the school aid budget. It also opposes any attempts to create private school vouchers or tax credit programs. Reducing the MIPSER's legacy cost burden on districts and increasing state support of paying down that debt. Currently, the target is about 2036 before that debt will be paid off. We'd like to see increased efforts to pay down that debt to get more money back in the classroom faster. Establishing universal preschool for all four-year-old children. This is a process and it's one that we will continue to work toward to get access for all four-year-olds. Supporting legislation that would put public school academies and their management companies on equal footing with traditional schools in regards to transparency and staffing. Public school academies are public schools and they do have to abide by the same transparency laws, but their educational management organizations do not. And so we would like to see them open their books so that we can make sure that they are being good stewards of taxpayer dollars. And finally, expanding federal free and reduced lunch and breakfast programs to all students. This is something we could also do at the state level. So we want to expand free and reduced lunch to all kids so it wouldn't matter your income level whether or not you receive meals. We saw this work during the pandemic when every child received a meal and we didn't have to worry about lunch debt or lunch shaming. So we want to see that happen now and just because you don't qualify for free and reduced lunch doesn't mean you're receiving a good lunch or breakfast. We want to make sure all of our kids are fed so that they can start the day focused and ready to learn. And those are your 20 through 24 priorities and we hope that you'll help support them as we move through this session.